Welcome back. Continue the discussions on International Women's Day. So, of course, um, the discussions have moved away, moved around all the issues that affect women in the country. And now we're talking about something that involves women a great deal, spirituality and faith. Uh, women playing a huge role in that, of course, in the building up of society, families. More importantly, uh, have depended on the faith uh, to help build an integral part of the family. With us this morning is uh, Bishop Priscilla Otuya, who is the vision of Global Alliance of Mothers of the Nation for Peace and Development. Thank you very much, ma'am, for coming on the Thank show. Thank you very much for having me. And I'm sure also, too, that a lot of projects that you have worked with women, youths, and children oftentimes have dealt with this very important aspect of it. Yes. Uh, why do you think it's important as we talk about the International Women's Day and the role of Nigerian women in the family, what do you consider as, as very important to her in building, for example, family or her work relationship? What, what do you think is the most important part that she must cultivate? To me, the most important part is, first of all, self-discovery. Because if you build on a faulty foundation, what you're gaining, you know, gunning for crumbles. Is it the society? Is it the family? you know, becomes faulty. Mm -hmm. So to me, I think uh, every woman, the Nigerian woman, f should go on a self-discovery mission right now because we are being on what we've been told. This is who you are. This is what you are. This is what you should do, what you should not do. And then we've been building on that, and then it affects the whole system. So that's what we are advocating for right now. Mm -hmm. All right. there, there is this song that... Um was interpreted to me that when a child is good, they praise the father, yeah. and when a child is bad, they blame the mother. The mother yes. And now, women have a whole lot of work to do in the home front. And in society today, we see that uh, we have uh, youths who are really restive. They're going into some form of crime or criminality or some form of vice. Uh, what is it that um, a mother or a woman has to do in terms of uh, grooming his, uh, her child uh, from the home front before the larger society. Yes, like even the way you presented it also, you know, gives a kind of food for thought. First and foremost, it's not just a woman's job to raise a child. A man has a very, very important role. Now, you are the man, you are the example, you are the role model. A man should put leadership for the family. Now, when the man does not do that, the woman now takes responsibility. And like you rightly said, we have a lot of things that we're grappling with these days. So it is not easy to just sit and say, okay, do this, do that, you understand? But again, we still do our best to make sure our children are brought up the way they should. But it is an equivalent task. It's not easy without them. Because you see, the way it is now, like let's talk about male children right now. Their dad's supposed to be the role model. What you will, you do, your children emulates from you. Now, a, a, a young man sees the dad beating the woman, the, the mother, or going on a drinking spree, or living the life how he wants to live it, and then he grows up to adopt that as a way of life. And then the woman has okay, see that. What do you think that child will do? Mm -hmm. So we must be realistic. It takes the husband and the wife, father and mother, to raise a child. And now it's now comes to, like you said, when a, a child is not doing well, it's the mother's thing. So the thing is on us right now, and I believe women are still doing their best, you know, their little best, because men are men, boys are boys. It is difficult to, you know, bring them, but even the ladies too. You see your, your, your friends, after you're in a house where you're, you're not eating a good meal, you understand me, you see your friend having a Turaya phone, 200,000 naira extension, good telephone, and you're like, Hello, you understand me? So it's not easy for women you know, to come around. Mm. Except we want to tell ourselves in you know, life. All right, being, being realistic. I, li I like the saying, the journey of a thousand miles begins uh, from the first step. That's of right. course, um, always pays to start early. So you, you're working with people at, at different levels of their lives to make sure that when they get to the important stage, which is, of course, uh, building the family of the nation, they have, like you say, discovered exactly who they are. So what sort of um, projects or, or things do you work on to help women, for example, or even girls understand who exactly they are? Yes, I've been asked these questions a lot of times, because when you talk about FBOs and NGOs, you talk about structures, you talk about uh, projects initiative, but you see, the people we're working with are women leaders that have their own organizations, mm. they have their own churches, they have their own ministries, and whatever you call it. So what we are doing right now, many of us entered into this work or system half-baked. 
maybe I grew up as a worker in the church, and I just love the system. I just become a minister of God. So what we are focusing on is education, reorientation, know who you are, even from the scriptures. Because like I said earlier, if you come into ministry right now, or really FBO, you're doing on what your mm. people have built so before. FBO, faith-based organization, exactly. so that people understand you know, it. So I want to pick on what I've you know, learned from my mm. mentors and all that stuff. And I go on with it. But it has not helped us. So we are focusing on going back to the foundation. What is God saying about women? What has he said about women? What is the Bible saying about what's the truth? Because everything we are, I, I, I tell whoever case we say that we are preaching second hand gospel, what they told us, but not what the scripture says. So our main work right now is to make sure women are really reorientated and empowered. Because when you're on a track, are you following me? You sail is you you run easily. But when you are not on track, you, you face bombs and all that stuff. So our main thing right now is education. You, know, you said that uh, women have ministries and all that. Uh, some people would uh, tell you that uh, women should not be seen, or should not be heard, but seen. And some other people have the uh, notion that um, if women are supposed to be helpmates and not in the forefront, they're supposed to support this supporting structure for the man. Uh, how is it that your organization, your the faith-based organization, uh, counters this uh, notion yes. about women. Before we go to the women, generally speaking, the whole system is adulterated, and I, we we discover that the scripture is also mis being misrepresented. Now, if you say women should not be heard, women should not be seen. Now, the God you are quoting says she's your helpmate. Now, if somebody is supposed to be your helpmate, that means she's supposed to provide the things that you need to achieve what you ought to achieve. Then the same you say she should not be heard. Let's not take, take it literally. If a mom, I don't speak, how can I help you? <laughs> Do you understand? You sign language. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> so if I don't speak, I cannot express myself. How can I help you? Do you understand? So it doesn't work. That's why things are the way they are because we don't have, we're not given the opportunity to really be who God, God wants us to be. If my husband is a carpenter, for example, and I'm to be his helpmate, I should be a master carpenter. I should know more than him in the area of his job. The Bible says. More than him? Yes, because how can you help somebody that is. Okay, now you are a professional carpenter now. I, I want to help you. I don't know but better than you. No, I'll, bring, help no, you. I'll bring the 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 nails for you, you know, <laughs> the wood. You know, I can spray it for you after you've cut it. But I don't have to do the work. They put it together. The truth we need to tell ourselves is that we are helpmates and we are called to help men. Let's talk about changing yes. changing stereotypes. One of the major indicators showing that Nigeria hasn't done very well in terms of women development is the rate is the numbers of women in political positions or political opportunities, uh, we ranked very low on the ladder globally. Do you encourage women, even in church or in faith-based organizations, to get involved in politics? Absolutely. Absolutely. Because then you mentioned church. Church began from the scriptures. Scripture goes back to God and back to time. Now, let me give you a scenario where the people of God, Israel, were in trouble, like we are in trouble now. <laughs> <laughs> and then, even the leaders, the generals, the captains, businessmen could not do a thing. And God raised a woman. She was a judge. A judge does this is equivalent to a king because Israel does they don't have physical kings and all that. So a woman judge was their leader about it. So but today we say Deborah, she's a church person, error. She's not a Christian. Deborah was God's woman in authority with God. So whoever tells you don't be in politics is a serious error that should be changed. If I were working on that already. All right, mm. so your organization is a Christian-based organization, but it's open to every woman of every religion, right? Yeah, if you say Christian-based, well, okay. It's a faith-based organization. Okay, faith -based. And if you're a person of faith, because I want to tell us also that what we practice today in a part of the world is funny. Now, faith comes from God. God is universal. Is a spiritual being. They give back to you in a, a Christian home. You call yourself a Christian. You a Muslim home. You call yourself. A, you are not. You are just it's children of God. 
So as long as you believe in God and you fear God and you want to do his righteousness, you are welcome to Mother's ordination. So we don't want to target Christian Muslim. Well, you know, like my earlier question, uh, a lot of women, if we go to the churches or mosques to, to worship God and we're out, what we, what we sometimes, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't tally what we hear from the pastor or bishop and then what happens outside the home. I've had a lot of people, uh, Christians actually say that, um, for a Christian family, uh, that uh, my, my husband's income is for the family, for me and him and the kids. But my income is for myself. It's coming from a Christian. Is that supposed to be, is that the right approach to having a good Christian home? Yeah, my take on this is that the whole system is wrong. The whole system true and true. You know, because um, from our, like I said, from our own part of the world today, Christianity as it's packaged today is really, really causing a lot of problem. Now, in Africa, where we are in Nigeria, before we talk about Christianity, we had God. Is a spiritual being. If you are Yoruba, you call him uh, a Lord Yoruba, or a Lindu Mare. If you are a Igbo, you call him Chuku. So God has been in existence. And what I'm going to is this. Some people, somewhere, packing what we are practicing today for selfish purposes. And it affects everybody down the line, both the men, both the women, and everybody. Now, go to the scripture where is our authority. When a home is built on understanding and on and knowledge, there should be openness between the two parties, right? You don't have any need to hide your income. I don't have any need to hide my income. What is yours is mine. What is mine is yours. But where there is crookedness and the misgivings, you understand, we begin to hide much from ourselves. You understand me? So the whole system is really, really wrong. And there's no way in the Bible that I read that the Bible says it is a man's job alone. <laughs> Proverbs chapter 30 says something about Virtuous woman, that you want, you know, going out in the field in the morning. This is where they've used to cage us because I'm a good body, I don't, know, I don't have leprosy. And if the scripture says, I wake up in the morning, buy field, do investment, and my husband will be known at the city gates, my husband. That means I have an input in his life. So it is wrong to sit down and say, okay, my husband should go out in the field and bring the money, blah, blah, blah. It is our money. But again, if you find yourself in a marriage, where the man doesn't have the right upbringing. All right. You understand me? Where he squanders the family money, like we have these days. Of course, you should be wise in keeping. I apply wisdom. <laughs> Thank so you very much. Make sure things go on well. Thank yeah. you very much, ma'am. Thank you very much, ma'am. International Women's Day. Role of women in family and nation. We're speaking with Bishop Priscilla Otuya, who is visioner for Mothers of the Nation for Peace and development. Yeah. Thank you very much, ma'am. Global Alliance for Mothers of Nation yes. with Peace yes. and Development. Thank you very much, ma'am, for coming on the show. Thank, Thank you. you. And happy International Women's Day again. I wish you the same. We'll take a break at this point, and when we come back, we have more for you. Please stay with us.